I recently ran a poll on my YouTube and asked you what is the hardest thing about summer dry fly fishing. And with 60% of the votes, you said that the hardest thing was understanding which dry fly to choose. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. If you are a returning subscriber, hello again. And if you are new here, my name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if you would like to learn more, make sure you smash that subscribe button right now. So I'm gonna start by saying this off, that we are in probably one of the most challenging periods of the small still water season. The water temperatures are high, the air temperatures are high, there's a lack of oxygen in the water and that can make fishing difficult. But there are ways around it that can help you get your fish. So the question we're going to be answering today is what dry fly should you choose and when? Now understanding the answer to this question largely depends on where you live. So different parts of the UK will offer different types of food to a trout throughout the year. If we look at the likes of the Midlands Reservoirs and the Bristol Waters, they have arguably one of the best buzzer hatches that can be found. But if you look at the more Welsh reservoirs like Clwedog or Brenig, they have some great Cochabondi, Hawthorne, Heather and Cow Dung hatches that exist. So first of all, we need to address where we are fishing and adopt our approach to suit. Now I'm not going to go into significant detail about every single part of the UK and what you should be using but as a general rule if you've got heathers and hawthorns you want to be fishing black hoppers. If you've got a good hatch of crane fly you're going to be fishing brown and orange daddies. If you have a good hatch of coch you're going to be fishing beetle patterns. But the one resounding food source that exists in all of these lakes that we can all capitalize on is the buzzer pupae. So with that in mind there are three phases to the top water column that we need to be aware of with a buzzer hatch so that we can understand what fly we should choose. Starting off with the emerging buzzer. So obviously the cycle of a buzzer starts at the lake bed, it works its way up through the water column to the point where it gets trapped in the surface film as it tries to break out of its shack and into an adult. This is arguably one of the most vulnerable stages for an emerging buzzer and the fish know it. This is where the fish will capitalize on the most and arguably are the easiest to catch. The rise from a fish taking an emerging buzzer can vary greatly. Sometimes you'll just see a slight whimper on the water as the fish takes an emerging insect below the surface film. Sometimes you'll see the fish's nose just come up out of the water and snatch away quickly as it takes its meal. And then other times it'll just be a small little dink on top of the water. So what are we trying to achieve? Well, we're trying to achieve a fly that sits right in the water column, suspended there for a transitionary period before it looks like it's about to push off. And with that in mind, you won't go far wrong with two styles of fly, either an upright CDC or a shuttlecock or even a foam suspender buzzer. Both of these patterns are fantastic at representing a fly that's stuck in the surface film trying to leave its shuck. And in terms of colours, you can keep it very simple. So your blacks, your clarets, your yellow owls and your hares ewes will cover you for most eventualities. And how you would fish that type of fly is very simple. I tend to go with a floating line, a tapered leader of 8 foot, attached with a tip ring and then 3 to 4 foot of terminal leader. My choices tend to revolve around Stroft, which is about three and a half pound, or Rio Fluoroflex of five pound. The Rio Fluoroflex is fluorocarbon, and the reason why I'm picking fluorocarbon over compolymer is that I want it to pull that fly just down ever so slightly once everything is settled. So that's if you have an emerging buzzer. What then happens in the life cycle of a buzzer is it will push out of its sheath and it will sit on the surface film. Now this is a basically a fully fledged adult. It'll have tiny wings, it'll have legs, and the best way to replicate those types of flies tends to be something that sits on the surface film. So for example, you're looking at hoppers, bobspits, midas, and f flies. Seals fur patterns with claret, black, and brown tend to be my go-to. I get the most success on them, and that's what I'm most comfortable with, and most fly tying companies will tie their flies in those general colours. Trout generally know that they do not have the advantage when it comes to adult dry flies. So what you'll often find is, is that you might get one, snatch a one quickly, but they won't necessarily be as hard on the adults as much as they would be on the emerger. 
and the setup for this cast looks slightly different so i'll fish three of them six foot six foot and six foot and generally i'll fish those types of patterns on large reservoirs for some reason they don't find as much success on small still waters the emerging style patterns of a cdc or a sussy buzzer tend to work far better on a small still water than it does on a large reservoir and vice versa with these idle style patterns okay so we've covered off the emerger we've covered off the adult now we're on to the final stage and this is where the water is sometimes littered with these buzzer pupae carcasses basically and the fish will gorge on these quite confidently so what you'll often see is two types of rises at this point either one where the fish comes up porpoises over the water and straight through as it consumes these shucks in multiples or you'll just see a fish rise six or seven times very quickly and consecutively as it consumes down all of these buzzer shucks that are left on the surface film. So there are two basic patterns we would use when we see that type of behavior, a crippled midge or a shipman's. I don't personally fish crippled midge as much, but they are very successful patterns. I tend to stay with the shipman's. It's a fly that's been around for years, it's very successful and it does the job very well. In terms of primary colours that always find success, you won't go far wrong with claret, black, brown or a hazier. And the leader setup is exactly the same as it was for the emerger. So that is a tapered leader to a tippet ring, then three to five foot of terminal tackle and then you're good to go. Again, I tend to fish with fluorocarbon just because that's my preference. Now, if you would like to learn more about summer dry fly fishing in detail, why not check out this video here? And YouTube seems to think that you would like to see this video here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, smash that subscribe button. My name is Reese. thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.